I'm Matthew McClendon, the J. Sanford Miller Family Director and Chief Curator of the Freyland Museum of Art at the University of Virginia, and my pronouns are he, him. Just a quick note about the inclusion of our pronouns you'll be noticing in our recent content. We are including the pronouns that we use as a demonstration of our allyship to the LGBTQ community, as we work to make the museum a more inclusive and welcoming space. Welcome to Playing Favorites, where I attempt to answer one of the questions I am most often asked, what is your favorite work of art? It's an impossible question for me to answer, so I am going to share with you works that I love, both in the museum's collection and farther afield. When I came to the Freyland in 2017 and began to explore our permanent collection, one of my early and most exciting surprises was that the museum has a major painting by the artist Raziel, who formerly went professionally by Iona Raziel Brown. I had been familiar with Raziel's work for some time, finding her to be a particularly compelling voice within contemporary art. Raziel is perhaps best known for her paintings that explore the appropriation of Black hip-hop culture by Japanese teens. These works also riff on Japanese Edo period woodblock prints and draw comparisons between Edo and hip-hop conspicuous consumption. I am a curator of contemporary art who has always worked in museums with both contemporary and historical collections. One of the things that excites me the most about contemporary art and artists are the conversations that they have through their work with the past. I think that contemporary art can be a powerful and accessible tool to help us understand why historical art remains relevant to our contemporary experience. Raziel's work embodies all of this for me. If it's not clear on the first look at the painting, you start to understand the cultures Raziel is exploring immediately with the title, one for the money, two for the show, still pimpin', after Katsukawa Shinei's The Actor Ichikawa Komatsu III. Raziel presents a figure, back turned, head and neck arching around to gaze directly at the viewer. In 2005, Raziel received a grant to live in Japan for six months. During that time, she studied kabuki theater, which she had been introduced to as a child by her mother, as well as a subset of Japanese prints, Yakushae, which translates as actor prints of famous kabuki actors. She was also able to witness the ganguro subculture of Japanese teenagers. Ganguro translates as blackface and references the dark brown makeup primarily worn by Japanese teenage girls to darken their skin. In addition to the brown makeup, the teens would wear white lipstick and create hairstyles reminiscent of African-American styles. Ganguro is an appropriation of Black hip-hop culture and style by the Japanese youths. Raziel has spoken of being dismayed by Ganguro and its relation to the painful histories of Blackface and performance in the United States, as well as worrying that hip-hop culture, a major contribution to American as well as global contemporary culture, was being disassociated, taken out of context from its source. However, she also realized that the teens were creating and living in this lifestyle as, t as a way of taking the revolutionary, the protest aspects of hip hop and applying them within their own contexts as they rebelled against societal norms. Knowing this, it now becomes clear in One for the Money that the figure is wearing the ganguro makeup. He has appropriated clear hip-hop fashions, the low-ride baggy jeans, the waistband of the boxer shorts showing, the loose-fitting shirt, the prominent ring on the left hand. But Raziel adds another layer, an appropriation of her own, further complicating the construction of a transnational identity. Here, you see the source image Raziel takes as inspiration for her composition. This is a woodblock print by the artist Katsu Katsukawa Shinei, who lived between 1762 and 1819, which is during the Edo period of Japan. The subject is the famed kabuki actor Ichikawa Komatsu III, and this dates to around 1791. Kabuki is, of course, the highly stylized form of Japanese theater that incorporates elements of movement to underpin the dramatic action. We associate it with intricate and elaborate costumes and makeup, which you see here. It began in the 17th century, and scholars considered its high point to be in the late 18th through mid-19th century, 
so this woodblock print is very much from that classical period. Komatsu is seen here standing in a boat next to an anchor. This would have been a stage set and props of the Kabuki theater. Additional sheets would have elaborated on the scene. Just out of interest, in 1801, he would change his name to Matsumoto Koshiro V and would become known for the leading male roles in Kabuki. When we look at the woodblock and the painting together, we can really begin to investigate how Razil uses the earlier work as a departure. The pose is obviously quite similar, though Razil doesn't take the body down to the feet, and we are therefore closer to the figure in the painting. The stage set is gone, but one of the details I particularly like is in the translation of the rope used to tie the anchor in the print into the handle for the bag in the painting. The color palette of the jackets or shirts is the same, but Razil includes those signifiers that I mentioned above of hip-hop culture, including the lowrider jeans here tagged with graffiti. Makeup is also seen in each work, the white of the kabuki stage in the woodblock, the darkening makeup of Ganguro in the painting. Take a moment to look at the two works together and think about how Razil has used a contemporary idiom to comment on both the present and the past. Think about how the contemporary painting enlivens a dialogue around the historical print. As I said in the beginning, I think that that is what I find so interesting in Raziel's work. Now, it's important for me to say that I am a white man interpreting the work of a black artist dealing with the appropriation of black culture. So I acknowledge the limitations of my understanding, and I acknowledge that I am viewing this through the particular lens of my lived experience. We have had visitors to the museum who have felt that this work does not portray black culture in a positive light, and we are sensitive to that and think that that is an important perspective to discuss in the galleries. We also know from visitor interaction that many, particularly our younger audiences, have positive associations with this image and see themselves and their experiences referenced in it. At the Freilin, we are committed to increasing the visibility of underrepresented people in our collections and exhibitions and amplifying their voices. And it's in this spirit that I wanted to share with you one of my favorite works in our collection. On the YouTube page, you'll find links to videos of Raziel speaking about her work, and I really hope that you will take the time to watch them and learn more about her work from the artist herself. Thank you for joining me for another Playing Favorites. And I look forward to more.